Six Nations Saturday, 10 minutes after the end of the game, up in Murrayfield, Scotland have won against England. Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series uh, here throughout the Championship. So hit subscribe if you haven't already. And I've got Elko with me to discuss this epic game up in Scotland. Hello, mate. ATC, cheers. Yeah, wow. What a what a mad Six Nations uh, Saturday. Really, really good. Yeah. I mean, can you sum that game up in like 15 seconds for me, please? Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, England are close to clicking, man. They they really are. There 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 was bits in there where I thought, wow, if they just those little bits and, uh, but you know, three thunderbolts from from um, the big winger and 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 England looked looked shot to bits and just interesting. Literally, just as we came on to record, listening to Borthwick's quite interesting around talking about how uh, Scotland have been together for a very long time and they've got a very established coaching team. And England aren't, and they're 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 uh, you know uh, something something in 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 the making sort of thing. But uh, interesting deflection. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, technically, factually correct. Um, but I mean, England. I think they'll be filthy with them uh, with themselves after this game, particularly in the first half when the game was very much there for the winning. I thought England were really dominant in a lot of phases. Uh, particularly the aerial battle. I thought um, Tommy Freeman was exceptional at that. And we just had so much territory, so much possession, but then just kept popping the ball up with errors at the line. We're trying to play quite intricate stuff at the line, I think. And every time we tried to make a short pass, it got knocked on. And I think, I don't know, four, five, six in the first half alone. Uh, and it just stopped us, uh, you know, generating the opportunities to score in points. They, they look like a team that's been doing a lot of defensive drills and not a lot of attacking. And they just look rusty, just like really basic errors where the pass is a bit too high. It's going off people's heads. And if those passes stick, you can see, you know, the the the, the first try was was epic. You know, lo lovely bit of play and, and everything stuck. And if they can get that right, they, just, they need more reps. Now, we might talk about this in a minute. I'm really annoyed that we've got another fallow week coming up. I think for all the games, it's it's doing my head in because I think going if 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 the fixtures were next week, it would be so fascinating. But they've all they've all got two weeks now to fix little bits and and make little you know little adjustments. And it'd be great if we were going straight in. But anyway, it's not to be. No, and I mean on Scotland's point as well, they were also making huge amounts of errors in in the opening stances. Like every time they got a chance to get the ball back, they'd knock it on or or find a way to mess it up. And I just thought, I mean, I thought their line speed, their defensive like intensity was at like a three out of 10, something like that. And it seemed like England were almost put off their timing by how passive Scotland were being. I, like, it, I don't know. It almost seemed to me like it had to be a deliberate decision to be kind of really passive and, and not charge up. Yeah, they're playing soft because um, I know, uh, listen to, to another podcast that uh, Finn was talking during the week about how when he played South Africa last that they'd actually softened on him and he got completely bamboozled by it that he was expecting a rush defence and nothing happened and his timing went off so maybe maybe that's something that he's brought in there and, and, and that happened but again just talking before we went on on air it's like the, the quality of this game was way off right but as a Six Nations game it was fascinating it was just and that's what you and I and, and I think you know, proper rugby fans and love it, it, it's it's not it doesn't have to be a ten out of ten game. It's the the effort that's going in, the 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 passion around it, the crowd, and even you know at the end, um, the the doctor James Austin is 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 retiring, and I don't know if you saw for Van der Murder's try where he where he dived. If you watch in the background, you can see him sprinting. <laughs> he's obviously yeah. it's my last one. You know, it's just yeah, you know, I just I just love this this stuff, but. Um, Another cracking Six Nations game, but the quality was slightly down, you have to say. Yeah, and you mentioned the atmosphere there. I want to pick up on that because the opening 20 minutes, it sounded like it was flat as a pancake up there in Murrayfield. It sounded like a lot of nervous Scotsmen being really worried about how dominant England were, certainly in terms of territory, you know, and, you know, the try was a danger signs as well. But we've said there's been a, a big lack of quality in this game, but when Scotland got their chances... 
well. Their quality was absolutely pristine. Couldn't really have been much better. You know, Turpiloto putting Hugh Jones through the middle, then offloading to Big Duan for the first. And then the second one off, a, you know, off another England error. Uh, but Duan was a, was a brilliant finish to get on the outside of Ben Earl and, and get down the line to score. Probably overdid it a little bit in the corner. Like he was really close to stepping out. For no need to do it as well. Yeah. So um, Scotland, was, Scotland's execution when they got their opportunities was top notch. Yeah, they 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 took their opportunities. Our first try was uh, very much a sucker punch on the on the the rush defence. They they let they kind of Finn was brilliant. Delayed delayed it where Slade had gone too far up and was what ball watching and then just put put the twelve through the hole. It was lovely and. Um, yeah, Van der Rodas was, I mean, the finishing to, I mean, Ben Earl's no slate, right? Um, he's he's quick. And to to make that decision quickly step and and get around, he, uh, he, Jones did a brilliant job to offload the ball to him at that time. And then he was gone. But he was close to, to stepping outside. I mean, it was like Dan Sheehan the other week. It was like, what? You just put the ball down. Jesus. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then England did get a bit more territory. And again, they, their attacking play at times looked clunky. It looked a little bit disorganised. It looked like, as you said earlier on, they haven't spent that much time on it. And when George Ford knocked over the drop goal, which was a decent drop goal as well, I, we I was like, it. right. We called it. <laughs> yeah, you called it. Um, yeah, like that gave me real positive feelings going into half time that we got some points for some more points for the territory that we'd had. But come out the second half, and I think a real key thing at the start of the second half was Scotland managed to put pressure on our exits. And Danny Kerr twice kicked the ball into touch, uh, which just meant pressure, pressure, pressure in England's yeah. half. And it allowed Scotland to get in the game, whereas we'd been kicking to compete all the first half and had got a load of joy from it. Yeah, I thought that tactically was not the right thing to do. Yeah, I thought... You know, I've said it a hundred times. I'm a massive fan of Danny Kerr. I thought he was wasn't quite on it today, um, and I kind of said as well during the week in our in our pre sort of game preview that he's a guy you you want to play when you're attacking, and uh, he's he's not as good at. But I thought um, uh, what's his chops that came on at nine That's with it. his with, yeah his his box kicking. And it's and he's left footed as well, which completely changes up as well. I thought his box kicking was a lot better, um, and we might see a change there. I, th I think maybe it may. Also, uh, I thought the, the the kick chase wasn't as good potentially as it could have been. I think Elliot Daly, yeah, isn't as good on, at that. I think the other winger is. Um, but yeah, Danny didn't have have the best day with the boot today. I have to say. Well, we're talking about box kicking. We've got to six minutes from the end. England are nine points down and we're still continuing to box kick. I'm just questioned that tactically as well. Just, I felt like we needed to really just, just go for it. And I'd prefer us to lose by another seven points. I felt like we had to score twice. Therefore, we're going to need a try. We need to start putting pressure on Scotland defensively. And the, the, the area of the pitch to me doesn't really matter. Even though we had had some success from the kick chase previously, I just felt like we should really have just played and played and played and given it everything in, in attacking phases. Yeah, TT, this this is the problem with the coaching staff that England have at the moment. It's for me, it's um I don't think you've I don't think even I've got the right attack coach, frankly, um, in Wigglesworth. I just don't think he's he's established enough or has the background to do so. Um and I think Borthwick is money ball and, and works on stats. And I think the players are afraid to do anything off, off the back of that. And you, if you're nine points down, you know you've got to get two scores. You should be running everything, you know, and earning it and running hard. And sometimes, like, you can see when they do it, that they're they're good. But um, to be box kicking in that scenario is, you might as well lose by, by more. Do you know what I mean? Just, like, yeah. go for it. Okay, if you give away a... You're not going to win the game. You you might get a, get within a bonus point, but this is Six Nations. You got you got to be going for the win. And I think we 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 said um, again in the pre pop is that the, what we wished for was two games, two teams going at it. That was the most important thing. And I think we got that for most of it. But where two teams should be going at it, or where a losing team should be going at it, is in those last five eight minutes where you're down nine and you have to score two tries. You should be throwing caution to the wind. And and running everything, and I guess in one way he did by bringing 
on the changes or making the changes that he made and bringing on um, uh, Femi, who was, who, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, what a, what a try uh, that he scored. Although I think uh, Red Path got left out to dry and he got blamed for it, but Kinghorn's got to stay. He's, it, Red Path's guard there. You know, Kinghorn's got to step in anyway. But yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think I think England should have been trying to run the ball more um, at that stage. Yeah, and we got to that stage because, and I think actually this phase of play kind of sums up the game a, a lot, the microcosm of it. It was an England line out. England lose the line out, um, which, you know, there was three or four, I think, today maybe. I don't know the exact stats, but there was more than one for sure. So Scotland get the ball, but then England's defence pressures them. Scotland knock the ball backwards towards their own line. And it's just like England are charging through, got all the ascendancy, all the pressure. I think two England players tackled each other as Cam Redpath picked the ball up and then sprinted up through the middle, made a great break. And then this yeah. the execution again of Russell to identify the space, Duan to be in exactly the right position. And it, I mean, it was a pretty much a jogging for him, really, wasn't it? That hat-trick try. Yeah, it was an awesome kick from from um, Finn. But you're right that that the the, the three player and and that's that defense they have and and maybe I'm, we're being really hot. I, I I do think England are very close, and I think Ireland needs to be very worried about both of these teams, right? Because England are close, and their defense, when it's right, is causing problems. But when it's wrong, they're they're getting absolutely taken to the cleaners. But it will come good at some stage. Whether it's six, six stages, I don't know. But Ireland needs to be worried. And then they also have got to be worried about Scotland, who, you know, as you saw with the execution of that crossfield kick, Finn can unlock anything. Um, and and if, if Van der Berg is on that form and he, and he scores a hat-trick like that, you know, anything can happen. So they've they got, they got to be careful of that. And I should say, I think, I like, I can see England have got really good intentions and it's just the execution that I'm really, well, I think they'll be disappointed in themselves with today. Like their attacking intentions definitely there. And on the defensive side, they are going to make mistakes. Like the way this defence works is that, you know, somebody will bounce out of a tackle. Somebody will find some space, but it's the overall sum of the, of the parts. And England managed to pressure Scotland into a ton of mistakes today, excuse me, and made a ton of turnovers from that. So, it needs to be looked at as a whole. And although there are some errors and, you know, they do lead to points sometimes, it's it's the big picture thing that I think is important. And I think England are moving in the right direction there for sure. Uh, uh, listen, 100%. Uh, I, I thought England were, you could you can see them getting better every single game and today included. And in regards to their attack, their intention was better today. But I think that was because of the individuals on the on the pitch. I think Furbank made a huge difference and he is what we think he is. He is a very, very good player. And you can see he's very, very dangerous. D- completely different player to Brady Stewart. Um, and th- that's what I mean, like, for, for all we're saying, and I'm, I'm jibing Wigglesworth and I'm jibing both. They are close. You know, it just depends what you want from your, your international team, what you want to look at. They're, wh- they're nowhere near in Ireland in terms of how they're going to play. But that doesn't mean they, they're not close to winning games. and 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 causing Ireland huge problems in two weeks, which I think they will. Yeah. Just finishing up on England, I think um, <clears throat> I think the reason why we saw them attempt to play a lot more was they got much more attacking platform, that they got good quality line-out ball today, and therefore, you know, the ability to at least lo- launch some plays was definitely there. Moving on to some more Scottish um, things, I thought Dempsey at eight made some really crucial interventions. He got a couple of choke tackles, up there turning the ball over at crucial times i thought he was he was outstanding today as well yeah he was he was he was very very good um kind of under the radar a little bit but did a lot of dirty work really cleverly what what were your thoughts on brace um there, there was we had on on bbc um nigel owens talking about how interesting it was that brace wasn't calling more um and actually i quite like it um in, in one way, because you're not coaching the players, um, which was the opposite of the earlier game. Um, but it, it was, you know, if you're, if you're not, it's, it's we quite like it, or the crowd quite like it when you hear more, because then you know what's going to happen, but he didn't. I don't know what you thought about that. I, I think this is actually maybe the only instance in the game where I really encouraged the coaching from a referee, because the, okay. the players involved, <laughs> because the players involved can't know if somebody's knees touch the ground. 
Yeah. Like they, they literally can't know that. Like there's no way of them seeing it and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's one area of coaching from referees that I think actually really clears the game up. So, so I think it should happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe, so in fairness to him, when someone's knee did hit the ground, he did say release. But when it was a maul, he didn't say maul. So basically, yeah. Basically, keep fighting if you don't hear release is kind of yeah. which is fair, which is fair enough. But yeah, I thought you did yeah. the game actually, Grace. Yeah, me too, me too. One other player I want to pick out is uh, is Dan Cole tackling both Blair Kinghole Corn and Kyle Stain in open field. Well up, well done, you big old tight head. <laughs> Love what, it. What an abs- what an legend, and and got told off by the referee for over celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> and was like he's he was absolutely mortified by what he'd done as well. I thought it was brilliant, brilliant bit of TV. <laughs> Love him. Yeah, that was that was quite funny. Okay, is there before we wrap this one up, Alco, is there any sort of other players you want to pick out or or any other sort of items at all? No, well, I mean the, the real big obvious one, um and my heart goes out to him is Jamie George. I mean, you know, obviously the, the backstory to, to losing his mom. Uh, earlier in the in the week and 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 coming out and playing and I I thought he was outstanding um t- to be able to do that um as a human is is unbelievable obviously utterly disappointed with the with the result at the end as well but yeah I, th- I think he I think he should be should be mentioned um for for coming out and and putting in a really good performance when he could have you know walked away and and had a week off sort of thing so fair play to him yeah completely agree with that and his interview afterwards as well he speaks so well. And he does. like, and he can see the positive and everything as well, which I think is so important, especially you know with the relatively uh, sort of new squads that, that have come together. Um, and talking about new squads that come together, Faya Waboso I thought was outstanding off the bench. Like every, I mean the try obviously, but every single time he carried, it was a positive, a positive carry. I think. This, this, this he's a, he's a he's a handful. I'm telling you. Um, and um yeah if again it's a worry for for fixtures coming up he, he seems to be we t- we spoke about him weeks ago he, he sees if he gets the ball in space he's so powerful i mean even when they kick through to him and he, there was three people on him he he bounced through and got got gain line so if they can bring him in more in, bring him into the game more then um yeah i think as i said i think elliot daly might be in danger of losing his spot after today's performance um personally and uh, you might get a chance at a start which would be interesting yeah the only other player i want to pick out is we thought this was going to be a real big breakdown battle it almost always is it didn't actually work out too much like that today i don't think it was more scrums than the rocks maybe i don't know uh but sam underhill won three turnovers and you know got back to his pilfering best i think that was probably the the top turnover maker on the pitch so it's good to see him winning turnovers it's it's not his usp you know he's more of a more of a banger, more of a tackler, really. But I was impressed with that. It's since he started wearing a scrum cap, I think, all of a sudden, <laughs> we're getting his head in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, put yourself in Scotland's shoes, Alco. How do you think they'll be feeling after this game? Obviously jubilant, but in terms of performance and all of that kind of stuff, how do you think they'll be? Oh, I, I think today was about winning. I don't think they, I don't think they'll care about, it, particularly because of what's happened over. In the last game, particularly, and uh, the the way they, the way they only just hung on to the Welsh game, probably wasn't a, a good feel factor. But today they can feel fantastic. You know, they've beaten the old enemy at home. Um, they've you know given their doctor of uh, twenty five, thirty years, whatever it is, um, a, a massive send off. Um, and they can, you know, they get a week off, so they'll they'll be on it tonight, having a big old party, and then. They can go into into the Italy game with lots of confidence and probably some plans of how they're going to take on um, a formidable Ireland team in in the last round, which might be uh, well will be a big game. There's no doubt about it. But I think they'll be very happy tonight. I think Finn will be having a few Perriers somewhere. Yeah, good on them. Fair play to them. It was a it was a good uh, comprehensive win in the end. Um, that's what we think, people. What do you think at home? Anything we've missed out on that you think was really vital in how this game turned out? Any players we haven't mentioned that you think played a key role? Let's have it in the comments down below. We'll join you there for a conversation. And give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. Just leaves me to say, Alco, thank you so much for your time again today. Pleasure, TT. Take care.
And people at home, you can subscribe there, watch that one next, and don't forget to get out and play.